Hello and welcome to Tech Simplified TV. This is the second episode in VLSI Milestone series. In last few decades, industry has followed the route of Moore's law. As a result, it has seen tremendous performance boost. Although that success had been counterbalanced by arrival of short channel effect, high leakage current and delay has degraded circuit performance. At such situation, a novel structure called SOI or silicon and insulator MOSFET has proved to be beneficial. In today's episode, we will discuss about SOI MOSFET. If you are interested, stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's take a look at the pointers we are going to discuss in today's episode. VLSI milestone and SOI MOSFET. Next, what is SOI? Third, SOI fabrication process. First, second and third slide. Why VLSI adopted SOI? Advantages of SOI first and second slide. Performance of SOI MOSFET. First, second and third slide. Reducing floating body effect. And finally, FDSOI versus PDSOI. That is fully depleted SOI versus partially depleted SOI MOSFET. Now let's go to the first slide. VLSI milestone and SOI MOSFET. There is a diagram in the right hand side. We have seen that diagram in high K episode. There is a list over the years. The big milestones have been introduced in CMOS technology that has been listed here. It started from layer of 2000 that is CU interconnect in six metal layer, then low K dielectric eight metal layer, SOI substrate, strain silicon, second generation strain and going like this we have reached in 2023 nano sheet fed but it's supply so here in 2003 we can see soi substrate in today's episode we will discuss about soi that is silicon on insulator this is diagram of a bulk silicon mosfet this is a partially depleted SOI MOSFET and that is one fully depleted SOI MOSFET. In bulk region, there is a difference between bulk silicon substrate and SOI substrate that there is one silicon dioxide or insulator layer in between that bulk zone. And here in FDSOI, the channel region is limited to very short height. These are the basic structure. Now we will see how does this new structure works how it is fabricated what is advantages and disadvantages etc so moore's law has been the main driving force for last few decades and device dimension reduced and performance got boost we all know for last many decades industry and academia has followed moore's law and to follow moore's law the device dimension has been reduced and that really gave good result up to certain level then some issues also started to come because of reduction in device dimension. When these issues came, industry and academia took a better or a different route. Every time, the high-k dielectric, SOI substrate, strain silicon, metal gate or high-k dielectric combination, pin fit, these are new ways to continue the journey. Now, device structure like SOI has been introduced. Why? Downscaling has resulted in short channel effect. Since the device dimension is reduced, channel length is also shrinked and due to this shortening of the channel length many effect came which was actually degrading the device performance and to get rid of that one solution came as soi now global foundry has developed soi solutions for high growth high volume wireless and wi-fi markets global foundry is a big uh, fabrication house they have developed soi solutions for high growth high volume wireless and wi-fi markets just to give you an idea where it's used we are mentioning this point now fdsy is suitable technology for new standards of iot automotive and mobile connectivity applications it has many benefits although it has some drawback but for application specific they have many benefits where are those that is iot automotive and mobile connectivity and applications so now this is a general trivia about the soi topic now we will try to understand what is soi structure and why it has been adopted and what are its benefits and shortcomings so let's go to the next slide what is soi SOI or silicon and insulator refers to a technology where MOS device is fabricated on silicon insulator silicon substrate rather than conventional silicon. We have seen in a conventional MOSFET 
the only silicon is there there is no silicon dioxide layer whereas in silicon on insulator we can see that there is a base silicon then ultra thin sio2 above it there is ultra thin silicon that channel is formed channel zone is formed in that ultra thin silicon so soi mosfet is fabricated as three layer device layer 1 layer 2 and layer 3 device and bottom most layer is substrate which is lightly doped the uniform buried layer of silicon dioxide which is called as buried oxide layer or box layer supporting substrate or handle wafer or base wafer there is a uniform buried layer it's not it seems that it's buried in a silicon wafer or in between a silicon thick silicon layer so it's actually called buried oxide layer or box layer so and this supporting substrate or handle wafer or base wafer and uh, there is a thin ultra thin silicon layer uh, there is a thin ultra thin silicon the soi is also a four terminal device source drain gate and body in SY based devices, silicon junction and channel are above electrical insulator like SiO2. Choice of insulator depends on application. This is silicon dioxide. Here we are seeing it's silicon dioxide, although the choice of insulator depends on silicon dioxide. Sapphire is used for high performance radio frequency and radiation sensitive application. Here we will talk about silicon dioxide based uh, technology because we are in microelectronics application. So SiO2 is used for microelectronics application to minimize short channel effect. The width of silicon film decides whether the SOI is fully depleted or partially depleted. If the width of SOI film laid over the buried oxide is thin, the device is said to be fully depleted or FTSY. If the width of the SOI film is thick, it is said to be partially depleted or PDSY. The thickness of the SOI layer or an FD SOI MOSFET is usually about one third the effective channel length in order to avoid a punch through current. FDSOI for its one third of the effective channel length is basically this thickness. It's uh, designed in such a way so that to avoid a punch through current. This buried oxide layer thickness that depends on application. So we are done with this slide. So let's go to the next slide. SOI fabrication process. Slide 1. There are few unique ways to fabricate SOI wafers. Why we are interested about SOI fabrication process? Because uh, this process is quite different from developing silicon wafer. First of all, this structure is quite unique. A buried oxide layer is there. So it's quite interesting to know how this box layer is sandwiched between two silicon layer. There are few unique ways to fabricate SOI wafers. That is SOS, silicon on sapphire, bonded and edge back SOI, thymox that is separation by implanted oxygen, Ltron or epitaxial layer transfer and smart card. Now this is silicon on sapphire. SOS wafers are formed by depositing silicon on the sapphire substrate at very high temperatures. Very pure sapphire crystal is grown in a controlled lab environment and the is silicon can be cleanly deposited on the surface of sapphire wafer. Directly deposited on sapphire wafer. Now that's second method, bonded and edge back SOI. First bark silicon wafer is taken. Next, this wafer is oxidized on both sides. Next, another silicon wafer is placed and bonded and annealed. Now, there is a silicon, then silicon dioxide. This is silicon layer, this is silicon dioxide. We are almost near to the structure we need. If we remove the above silicon layer, so it will remain only that thin silicon layer, then buried oxide, then handling silicon layer. So thermally oxidize the wafer. Another wafer is bonded over the previous one by method or SFB or silicon fusion bonding. This is uh, the joining together of two silicon wafers without the use of intermediate adhesives. Now the bonded wafer is etched to get the required thickness of SOI. The extra part is etched and we get the required thickness of SOI. We have discussed about two methods of fabrication of SOI wafer. It is one is silicon on sapphire and second is bonded and edge back SOI. So we are done with this slide. Let's move to the next slide on SOI fabrication process. Now this is Timox method and another is smart card fabrication process. Okay, so let's start with Simox method. First silicon wafer is there, then oxygen is implanted into the wafer. This oxygen implantation is so that it penetrates the wafer and those oxygen atoms landed in a position not exactly at the surface because implantation process is done and they will settle a little bit below the surface. Now it's annealed. 
at high temperature it's anil so the oxygen atoms react with silicon and form silicon dioxide so now silicon handling wafer now silicon dioxide and silicon so that is cymox method development of silicon on insulator by cymox method that is oxygen implantation method now smart cut fabrication process that is initial silicon this is oxidized there is silicon wafer a another one is silicon wafer b now wafer a is oxidized so oxidation happened and silicon dioxide formed now smart cut implantation that is hydrogen ion is implanted here also those hydrogen ions penetrate a little bit length and they they go inside or deeper a little bit deeper now cleaning and bonding happened in a way that on wafer b that oxidized wafer a is bonded in the reverse way so that this implantation here it was at top here it's top down now smart cut splitting happens from here the wafer get detached so look at this structure the remaining part of wafer a that becomes after annealing and cmp touch polishing it becomes again a bulk silicon and we can use it as a wafer a or new wafer b we can reuse this remaining bulk silicon wafer that's a saving definitely so this is smart cut fabrication process this cutting method is called smart cut now we are done with this slide so let's move to the next slide this is sy fabrication process and this is the third slide that is eltron or epitaxial layer transfer it starts with a seed wafer now on that seed silicon wafer double layer of porous silicon is created porosity of these two layers not same and on that this epitaxial layer is formed on epitaxial layer this oxidation is done so silicon dioxide is done now one handling wafer is taken and that is bonded over this silicon dioxide layer now this is the structure first handle wafer then silicon dioxide then epitaxial layer then porous silicon and the seed wafer in such a situation splitting is done in such a way that one of the porous silicon remain with the seed wafer and another porous silicon layer is with the handle wafer so from here the structure get separated now if we flip this structure so first porous silicon then epitaxial layer then silicon dioxide and here is handling wafer so this we already got the soi structure with an extra layer that is porous silicon now we do the etching so that this porous silicon layer is removed it's removed now h2 annealing is done and that is soi box and handle wave this is the structure this is epitaxial layer transfer method so we have discussed all together different five methods of developing soi wafer now why vlsi adapted silicon dioxide in our very first slide we say that vlsi adapted soi because of short channel effect now let's elaborate on those points first comes drain induced barrier lowering this is the bulk mosfet structure source drain and this is the channel and this is basically junction depletion zone n plus zone is highly doped both cases and this p substrate is lightly doped when junction is formed just to uncover equal amount of uh, charges the junction depth or the depleted region depth is uh, higher on this p substrate zone because it's lightly doped and it's less in the highly doped n plus source or drain zone now this this is the energy band diagram of a mosfet here it's basically source this is the channel and here it's drain so this dotted one is when there is no biasing and when the drain bias is given this barrier is basically lowering when device dimension is reduced the length is reduced so effective distance between source and drain is reduced from source to drain potential is higher at the drain end in that voltage its effect reaches almost source zone and the source barrier is lowered that is called drain induced barrier lowering for a long channel device a drain bias can change the effective channel length although the source barrier remains same for a short channel device the drain is closer to the source as compared to long channel device so drain bias can influence the barrier height at source end that is 
effect of in a long channel device and it's this is showing the DIBL effect in short channel device is here the potential that has a reach over this junction also so barrier rather than being original position here it's reduced here so barrier is lowered this figure shows energy band along the semiconductor surface for a short channel device this lowered barrier with decreasing channel length or increasing drain bias is commonly known as drain induced barrier lowering so that happens because of short channel. We are done with this slide. Now let's move to the next slide. Now drawback of bulk MOSFET. Here we will discuss four effects or four phenomena. That is punch through, CMOS latch up, junction capacitance and leakage current. Now punch through. It's a breakdown mechanism. Punch through is basically a breakdown mechanism. Occurs when sum of depletion layer width for source and drain junctions is comparable to the channel length. This is the channel length although this uh, the junction it's almost comparable to the channel length. Total length. And the depletion region of the drain and source junction gradually merge together as the drain voltage is increased, causing current to flow irrespective of VG at high VD. When VD is high enough that these reverse bias junction, they just merge together and there is no barrier basically. There is no control of gate that is called punch through. That is one phenomena. Another one is CMOS latch up. This is a typical NMOS and PMOS structure. PMOS is developed on N oil. Now this is P substrate. Now this is one MOSFET. This is another MOSFET. Now this is parasitic BJT structure with this N plus, this zone P substrate, then N well and then uh, P plus zone. So parasitic BJT is, is formed in a CMOS structure, forms feedback loop and create a PNPN structure. So such latch up condition create low impedance path between VDD and VSS, high current flows and IC gets damaged. This is basically CMOS latch up. We have a detailed episode on CMOS latch up video and article both are available. Links are mentioned in description so you can read it, you can watch the video to clear your concept. In bulk CMOS, this latch up action happens that is that actually ruins the device. Another thing is junction capacitance. We know that N plus and P substrate there is a junction in last slide we showed this junction means it's this zone is depleted of free carrier. Here it's highly doped, it's doped. It's almost like a capacitor. Here junction capacitance, there is drain capacitance and then overlap capacitance. Now depletion capacitances are there. There is gate capacitance here, depletion capacitance. So basically in a MOS structure, for the structure we are giving a oxide layer, gate oxide layer. That's we know others are formed while the device is at operation. And those junction capacitances, every time our just device is uh, switched on, these capacitances first are charged. Switching of a capacitor is not instantaneous. So delay is introduced here and unwanted voltage is dropping on a unwanted capacitor which is basically unintended. We have not designed it. Oxide layer is there to form a capacitor. Others are formed. And the fourth phenomena is leakage current. A lot of leakage currents are there in bulk MOSFET. That is gate current tunneling. We have matched the colors with these arrows and this is the name of the leakage currents. Gate current tunneling, hot carrier injection, subthreshold current is there. Then reverse bias junction current. It's a reverse bias junction. Some leakage current is flowing there. Gate induced drain leakage and then channel punch through current. We have seen this channel punch through when electrons or the carrier flows, this current flows leakage current that is channel punch through current. All are there. Basically, there are four big issues punch through, CMOS latch up, junction capacitance, leakage current. All are there. Now, we will see these are the problems or drawbacks of MOSFET and how we can get rid of all those by designing a SOI MOSFET. So we are done with this slide. Now let's move to the next slide. Advantages of SOI. Bulk MOSFET, partially depleted SOI MOSFET and fully depleted SOI MOSFET. Now what are the advantages? We get reduction in drain source parasitic capacitances, delay dynamic power consumption and leakage current. There is an oxide layer. So here oxide layer is a little bit lower from this zone and here the oxide layer is just below the source and drain. So formation of depletion region is here at least possible. Here it's almost impossible to formation of depletion zone. So if 
junction depletion zones are not developed like this so first incident of punch through and junction capacitances removed so if there is no junction or less junction so obviously parasitic capacitance will be less delay dynamic power consumption these are less and leakage current is also less now due to an oxide layer the threshold voltage is less dependent on back gate bias compared to bulk cmos due to that oxide layer the threshold voltage is less dependent on back gate bias compared to bulk cmos in bulk cmos back gate bias is there to control the vth this makes soi device more suitable for low power application so back gate dependency is less here then sy devices have no latch of problems as there is no substrate to form pnp and structure so the free bulk zone is not here in between there is a disconnection because of this presence of silicon dioxide so latch up is solved diffusion capacitance reduction since bottom charges insulator there is a chance to formation of junction uh, capacitance a little bit because of the depletion zone is can be created here here is almost impossible touch the silicon dioxide layer this device has excellent radiation hardness to alpha particles neutrons and other particles now alpha particles are generated by small amounts of radioactive elements in ic materials that is another benefit of soi devices and soi allows more devices per die area due to absence of wells and possibility of direct contact of the source drain diodes in the nmos and pmos transistor well formation is not needed here reduced number of steps in fabrication now box coupled with ground plane suppress fringing electric fields through the box and substrate so front gate channel increases and dibl lowers so we are done with this slide let's move to the next slide now faster device operation feed power product due to reduction of parasitic capacitance primarily due to reduced source drain junction capacitance but also from gate to substrate capacitance and metal to substrate capacitor now performance improve equivalent to next technology node without scaling so device operation we said that uh, these parasitic junctions are less cage is less internal capacitances charging discharging is less so obviously speed will increase now performance improvement means performance improvement we actually move to next node so without moving to next node we can get better performance performance of 0.25 micron devices on sy wafers equivalent to performance of 0.18 micron device on bulk wafers this is a 0.25 micron devices on sy wafer is equivalent to performance of 0.18 micron devices on bulk wafer now potential to simplify device fabrication steps well formation is not needed that is also another point you are mask and ion implantation step this mask preparation and their alignment is a very critical steps and expensive also so in case of soi fewer steps are required so it's possible that we could save more on fabrication now less complex lithography and etching required to achieve next generation perform we are done with this slide let's move to the next slide now performance of soi mosfet first slide that is when we discuss about a device first thing we discuss is about threshold voltage so a thick film soi device behaves like a bulk device due to absence of interaction between the front and back depletion regions the threshold voltage is same as in bulk device for a thin film soi device the threshold voltage is a function of different possible steady state charge condition at the back interface now body effect in an soi transistor the body effect is different find as the dependence of threshold voltage on the back gate bias in a thick film device the body effect that is back gate effect is negligible due to absence of coupling between front and back gate. now floating body effect that's a very important thing floating body effect is the major parasitic effect in soi mosfet those junction parasitics is removed here what we were facing in bulk silicon mosfet that is removed here although there is one parasitic effect that is floating body effect or fb it's a consequence of complete isolation of transistor from the substrate this is the transistor this is barium dioxide and below it basically the handling wafer is there or the base wafer the effect is related to build up of a positive charge in silicon body of the transistor originating from holes created by impact ionization this charge cannot be removed rapidly enough primarily because no contact with silicon film is available self feeding bipolar currents and kink effect are said to be the major disadvantages of soi technology when the body is left floating 
This is source n plus source. This is n plus drain. In such situation, when the field is enough, while electron is moving from this side to that side under bias condition, this electron having high energy just collide with the lattice and is actually creates on collision. It creates electron hole pair. Those electrons, extra supply of electrons that moves here and in this zone. This neutral body is small zone is there low potential neutral body those hole are here those hole comes here this neutral body is basically p type substrate and its n type it creates a diode the hole is here n plus supply is here there is a diode formed here n plus zone and here it's n plus p there is a diode is formed and once holes are started to accumulating here this diode is forward bias so in forward bias diode the current is increased and the electron supply is also increased so that thing happens because of this this floating body this neutral part is not under depletion zone if this area is thick enough not whole of this zone between the source and drain it's completely depleted so this zone is neutral this body creates problem that is floating body problem that floating body give rise to some problems like impact ionization is happening as we am saying now self heating happens bipolar currents flow because of this and kink effect this sudden increase of electrons or the free electron supply in the system increases the current suddenly that is kink effect so these are the issues because of floating body effect we will discuss in next slide also now let's move to the next slide floating body and parasitic bipolar effect the presence of floating volume of silicon under the gate is the origin of several effects as we have seen in the last slide generally referred to as floating body effects there exist a parasitic bipolar transistor in the mos structure if we consider n channel device if it's an n channel device the n plus source the p type body and the n plus drain indeed form the emitter the base and the collector this is emitter this is base this is collector of an npn bipolar transistor respectively in a bulk device the base of the bipolar transistor is usually grounded by means of substrate contact but due to the floating body in an soi transistor the base of the bipolar transistor is electrically floating this parasitic bipolar transistor is origin of several undesirable effects in soi devices now self heating effect due to thermal isolation of substrate by buried insulator in an soi transistor removal of excess heat generated by the joule effect become critical electrons are flowing so heat is generated that heat cannot dissipated because of this buried oxide layer it's like a compacted box above its oxide layer below its oxide layer in both the sides there are n plus zones so heat is trapped here only gradually heat increases and the device performance decreases this is without self heating and with self heating the current value decreases it leads to substantial elevation of device temperature the excess heat mainly diffuses vertically through the buried oxide and laterally through the silicon ion into the contacts and metallization due to relatively low thermal conductivity of the buried oxide the device heats up to 50 to 150 degrees centigrade this increase in device temperature leads to reduction in mobility and current drive thus degrading the device performance over a period of time this is the graph for self heating effect this blue one is without self heating and the red one is with self heating the gradually the current decreases let's move to the next slide now kink effect kink effect is an phenomena occurs due to floating body and impact ionization the kink effect is a appearance of kink in the output characteristic this is the sudden increase that is kink the kink is very strong in n channel transistors although absent from p channel devices in a thick film or n channel pd mosfet when vd is high enough the channel electrons can acquire sufficient energy in the high electric field zone near the drain to create eh pair here in a thick film or pd soi mosfet vd is high enough we kept vd high enough the channel electrons acquire sufficient energy in the high electron field 
gradually from source to drain electric field increases energy in high electric field zone near the drain to create eh pairs electron hole pair is created due to an impact ionization mechanism the generated electrons move into the channel and the drain whereas the holes which are majority carriers in the p type body migrate towards the place of lowest potential the generated electrons move to the channel move into the channel and the drain because current is flowing and the hole these are basically this is the p type body majority carrier they migrate towards the play of lowest place of lowest potential that is the floating body the injection of holes into the floating body forward biases the source body diode this is p type body this is n plus source it's basically a pn junction so lots of positive carrier coming here so this diode is forward biased so the injection of holes into the floating body forward biases the source body diode the increase of body potential gives rise to lowering of threshold voltage and source body potential barrier more minority carriers are able to flow from source to channel so here it's forward biased so more electrons are released in the system and this happens again the same thing happens more minority carriers are able to flow from source to channel thereby causing an excess drain current and producing many more pairs through avalanche process this positive feedback results in sudden increase in id that is drain current or kink in output characters suddenly a lot of lot more electrons are introduced in the system and suddenly current increases that is kink effect so we are done with this slide now let's move to the next slide more on kink effect fdsy and kink effect we all discussed about pdsy partially depleted sy so what happens in case of fdsy is there kink effect or not now let's see the electric field near the drain is lower in fdsy than pdsy as a result less electron hole pair generation takes place in the fully depleted device because a fully depleted device is fully depleted if there is no neutral zone is there also in fdsy the source body diode are already forward biased due to full depletion of the film and therefore the hole can readily combine in the source without having to raise body potential there that is why fdsy is free of kink effect and now p channel sy mosfet and kink effect whatever we have discussed about n channel mosfet now p channel mosfet p channel devices are free of kink effect because of coefficient of electron hole pair generation by energetic holes is much lower than that by energetic electrons the kink effect is not observed in bulk devices as the majority carriers generated by impact ionization can escape into the substrate or to a well contact the kink effect can be eliminated from partially depleted sy mosfet if a body contact is provided for removal of excess majority carriers from the device body in case of p channel device also there is no kink effect it's a phenomena related to n channel devices in pdsy this kink effect can be removed if the body contact is provided for removal excess majority carriers then it will get removed so we are done with this slide let's move to the next slide now reducing floating body effect how we can reduce this floating body effect now body contact and source body tie structure there is contacting silicon underneath the gate region to the ground effectively suppresses the kink effect as well as the parasitic lateral bipolar effect several schemes exist to provide the transistor with body contact it consists of p plus region which is in contact with p type silicon underneath the gate so body contact is uh, just giving a way to removal of those excess carriers now source body tie structure is another one a more compact method source body tie structure p plus body ties are created on side of n plus source diffusion if the device with this large additional p plus region can be formed in the source such as p plus n plus p plus n plus structure is introduced such devices main drawbacks of being asymmetrical and the effective channel with this smaller than the width of active area so body contact and source body tie structure these are used to get rid of this floating body effect now fdsy versus pdsy there are two types of sy mosfets so now let's compare their performance fdsy devices are naturally free from kink effect we have seen that now fdsy have in and sub threshold swing s therefore fd devices operate faster because of a sharper sub threshold slope and a reduced threshold voltage that allows for faster switching of mos transistor this transistor also have increased drive current at relatively low voltages so fdsy have some benefits over pdsy Fully depleted SOI devices have highest gains in circuit P 
speed, reduced power requirements and highest level of soft error immunity. And now interfacing coupling effect affects operation of FDSY, their operation. The interface coupling is inherent to fully depleted SOI device where all parameters that is threshold voltage, transconductance, interface trap response of one channel are insidiously affected by opposite gate voltage at the body docks. That is one shortcomings. The threshold voltage fluctuation due to SOI thickness variation is one of the most serious problem in FDSY MOSFET. PDSY devices are built on thick silicon layer and are simpler to manufacture. PDSY, that structure is easier to build and most design features for developing PD devices can be imported from bulk silicon devices and used in SOI environment with only modest change. Although that is not the story of FDSY, this makes circuit design for PD devices simpler than for FD micro circuit. When we talk about a device, obviously its performance parameters are important, although it has to be well suited in the existing system. Altogether, a different system is a huge expense in terms of fabrication. So, PDSY has that benefit. It slightly modification or small modest change in bulk silicon technology, we can get these PDSY devices, which is not possible for FDSY. Their manufacturing or fabrication process is quite different or more steps are required. So, both the devices have pros and cons. So, basically, we are done with this discussion. SOI devices, thank you for watching up to this point. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like. In case you have any dislike, please put it as a comment. If you have a query, question, put it as a comment. Thank you again and bye for today.